In this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of my favourite characters, Groot. I am using Serracino Pasta Sculptura, which is basically a paste um, made from chocolate. This medium will allow me to create a strong standing model as it dries really firm and it's great for texturing. Before I start modelling, I'll pop it in the microwave for a few seconds just to get some heat into it and then it's easier to shape. Starting with the legs, I'm shaping each one into a long cone shape, so it's wider at the bottom, and then adding a lolly stick for support. I'm cutting each leg at an angle so that it will sit neatly against the body. I'm forming the body shape so that it's wider at the shoulders and slimmer at the waist. And then I'm just going to model the neck out of the body. I'm just trimming the supports in the legs ready to be inserted into the body. Now that the legs are in place, I'm just going to fix them to the body by smoothing the joints and blending that chocolate together. If any areas are a little bit bulky, it's really easy just to trim those away with the knife. And then you can just smooth over with your fingers. The heat from your fingers will smooth out any sharp edges or, or sharp lines. For the arms, I'm starting with sausage shapes. And I'm keeping them quite bulky because Groot has got nice bulky muscular arms in this movie. And shaping in the hand and the elbow just by rolling in the centre and then adding a support. To make his hands I'll first cut the thumb and then just move it out from the, the rest of the hands slightly and cut three cuts for the fingers. I'll shape each finger by rolling, which will stretch the paste, but that can be cut down um, shortly. I'm just adding a little bit more shape using the Dresden tool. And then bend over the fingers. and then just tidy up the joins on the back of the hand. I'm just adding a little bit more definition to the elbow and then just smoothing it out with my fingers. Once the arms are in place, I'm just smoothing and blending the joints, just to make sure that they're nice and secure. I'm 
just scraping in a little bit of texturing into the fingers now. Groot's whole body is made up of bark and it's quite a, a rustic looking bark. So I'm using a couple of techniques to create this. First of all, I'm using a short fur texture mat, which will give me the nice deep lines that I need. And then I'm cutting the paste into pieces, making sure that the edges are rough and nothing should be perfect and neat. And then adding some extra texture in using the Dresden tool. And then I'll just add all these pieces to the whole surface of his body. And to make sure that I get everything in the right place, I'm using a reference photo as I do this. I'm just rolling out some thin strands of, of paste and I'll place these in certain places around the body just to represent vines. It's okay if the vines are a bit thinner in places or they're a bit messy because this will just add to the effect.
His neck is made up of vines, so I'm just um, adding the uh, vines here to the neck using a reference photo again to show me how they should be placed. Once they're in place, I'm just going to use the dressing tool to blend them into the neck a little bit more just so that they don't snap off. Now just to add a bit of texture to the vines, I'm using a cocktail stick just to create some really fine lines. His chest is looking a little bit flat now that I've added the vines to the neck, so I'm adding some extra pieces onto his chest area to bulk him out a little. To build up the layer on his arms, I'm starting with the vine effect, so I'm just creating small vines, starting with his fingers and just reaching up onto the wrist area. And then for the rest of the arm, I'm modelling sections of paste, so it's not like the body, you don't have to add um, pieces of flat bark, this time it's more rounded. Uh, so it looks a little bit more muscular and then I'll add the texturing onto those pieces.
And now I'm going to do exactly the same for the back of the body and again using a reference photo which will help me place the pieces in the right place. So I'm just adding a little bit more here to the front of the leg as it was looking a little bit flat. And now adding a few more vines just for finishing touches. And I just need to add a couple of more pieces of bark to the bottom of the legs just to bulk it out a bit. Just to finish his body off now, I'm adding a couple of shoulder pieces. To make his head, I'm forming a ball of paste into an oval shape. So I'm just going to shape in his chin area and just smooth over the front of the face. I'll attach that with a small piece of cocktail stick. I'm 
I'm making a, a mark for where I want the eyes to be. And then just pressing in with a ball tool to deepen the eye sockets. And I just keep smoothing the paste as I do this. So I'm just forming a little bit more of a shape to his, to the front of his face. And shaping around the eyes a little bit more. And now digging into the eyes a little bit deeper, ready for me to place the eyes. I'm now adding a rough texture in to the top of his head. And creating his mouth. Starting with um, just creating a little cut using a mini palette knife. And then I'll extend that cut. And then just smooth around and the, to shape the mouth. So here I'm forming um, the shape of lips, just to start it off. And then shaping around underneath the mouth. So I'm adding a fine texture into the whole of the front of the face now, not quite as deep as it is on the body. His chin is not quite um, wide enough, so I'm just adding a bit of paste to make that a bit thicker. I'll just blend it in and add the texture in. And 
and just to finish off the top of his head I'm adding a bit more paste uh, blending that in to the rest of the, the head and then just cutting in some bark texture and cutting out some pieces so it looks nice and rustic To create slightly fuller lips, I'm just adding a little thin strand of paste to the bottom of his mouth and to the top. Just blending that in, adding a bit more shape and then adding the texture in. I've rolled dark brown oval shapes for the eyes and then just popping them in place. I'm going to add a thin strand of paste to the bottom and the top of the eye just to form eyelids and, and then just blend those into the face. To add his colouring, I'm starting with a paint by mixing Nutkin Brown edible tint with isopropyl alcohol. I'm painting the whole of the body just to make sure that I get into all the um, texturing, all the deep lines. And then once it's dry, I'm going to remove most of this paint using a cotton pad and alcohol from the top surface of the body. I'll then add cream tint into the brown to create this lighter tone and brush the whole surface of the body, taking care not to brush into the deep texture lines. Once the paint is dry, I'll finish off by dusting on a little bit of spring green edible tint into a few areas on the body and to the top of the head. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please remember to subscribe so you can see more videos like this.